I've had so many people feel sorry for me till I'm so used to it. It doesn't bother me. I know that I help them help you with the conversation. I know you feel sorry, but oh yes, I know you. You you just know I'm dumb for staying with a good man because he married you. Warning: Viewer discretion is advised. The content, views, and educational material you are about to experience could challenge your belief, trigger strong emotions, and frankly, piss you off. This isn't for everyone. If you're not ready to confront new ideas, or if your feelings bruise easily, this might be the time to click away. Expect to be challenged, to think, and you might even want to scream at the screen. Proceed with caution, and remember, you chose to be here. Let's get it. I saw Malika Peace is Fatima Coach Fatima, one third of Outstanding Personal Relationships and co-author of the new book, Let's Talk Polygamy on Censor. Make sure you guys are ordering your book today by visiting Let's Talk Polygamy.com for details. You are not going to want to miss this book. You get the three perspectives of myself, my co-wife, and our awesome husband. Coach Nadir. Now, I'm going to get into this video like I always do. I love bringing um, really important topics. We do that on our channel. We try to be as transparent as we can be so that we can help you all and help ourselves um, live a life of true fulfillment. And one of the ways to do that is to tackle these topics that aren't so easy to talk about. We got to talk about it because if we're not going to talk about these things, who will? Who's going to talk about them? Who's going to have the discussion in the comments? Who's going to disagree sometimes in the comments? And that's fine because sometimes people don't understand what they don't understand. And creating videos such as this one is a way to start the conversation. That's a way to make sure we all have the information that we should have from different perspectives. Because again, and I always give this offer, this offer, this reminder, that polygyny is just not happening to you. Whether you like it or not, you have children possibly. And if you don't, you've mothered children that might not be your own, meaning siblings, meaning uh, little family members, people in the community, youth. And I would tell anyone that is a, a wife or a husband in polygyny, or maybe even if you're single, learn about this subject. Learn about it on this channel. Um, learn about it through different books, uh, including our book, Let's Talk Polygamy Uncensored, because you never know where you might help with the words from others. Now, this video is, you know, in this video, I want to talk about some different steps after finding out your husband's married in polygamy. So he's married. What's next? I've been asked the question oftentimes, and I do lead with my specific videos um, with what I've been through, what I've coached and counseled women through. And if you're interested in my coaching or counseling services, please visit me at coachfatsma.com for details on that. Um, I'm very sincere about the work that I do. OPR is sincere about the work that we do because we've been through a lot individually as a family um, in our monogamous marriages to coach that there because my co-wife and I coach now are not married to one another. Just for clarity, for those of you that might be new and don't know us very well, uh, we are not married to one another. But she's my sister in Islam and she'll be my sister in Islam whether we are married to coach now or not. Um, and that's not to say people go, what? Y'all about to get divorced? We're not talking about divorce, y'all. <laughs> just, I have to be clear on that because that is speaking to the magnitude of the relationship that I have with her as sisters in Islam. We're not biologically sisters, just making that clarification. Again, and that's for those of you that are new, I don't want to be so arrogant as to think that everybody knows who we are because they don't, you know, and don't care. And that's okay, but we care. Now, <laughs> with that being said, what are the next steps to take when you find out or you have the knowledge that your husband desires polygyny or wants to practice polygyny. One of the things that I did for myself that was, I can't even say it was, it was, I can't say, oh, that was important to do. This was powerful and empowering, was to pray for myself and my family and my husband and my co-wife because this journey has not been easy because of what people think you should be or rep represent yourself as or the words you should speak out of your mouth, they, they'll 
criticize everything that you do, micromanage things that think you need the help and advice on things you should do. And sometimes we do that. We need that. But in my case, the people that gave me advice early on, I knew those people loved me. And one of the things I had to learn is to pray for myself and not speak to people that didn't love my family about my family. Because when you do that, some things are going to happen. They don't care. They don't care, and they don't want to give you resolve. They don't want to give you a solution because they're too busy feeling sorry for you. I've had so many people feel sorry for me till I'm so used to it. It doesn't bother me. I know that I help them, help you with the conversation. I know you feel sorry, but, oh, yes, I know you. You, you just know I'm dumb. Christine was a good man because he married him. I had a friend of mine tell me, and I'll, I'll not say her name, she told me the other day, she said, you know what? At least your husband tries. Mm. She was speaking to some of the challenges she's facing in her life. And I'll keep that private, but she said, at least your husband tries. Now, she's been in this journey and has the knowledge of polygyny and my husband being a polygyny, she knows a lot more Um than I thought, you know, it's a lot more than I thought because she's not in polygyny. Her husband doesn't practice polygyny. Matter of fact, she said, you know what? I, I really don't think that would be for him. She said, but I told him, you know what? If you want to do it, knock yourself out. <laughs> knock yourself out. And she had such joy across her face. You know why? Because she couldn't control it. She couldn't control him. She couldn't control it. So letting go of control was a major major decision I made. I said, this has nothing to do with me other than that which affects my life specifically or my marriage specifically. And some may argue point, well, it does. But I can't control the fact that he married again. I can't control the fact that he had children again that aren't my children, but they're the children of his family. And they have the protection of my mind, body, and soul. So no harm come to them in my presence, and people will not speak ill of their parents in my presence. They will not raise their hand to them and strike them and get away with it in my presence. They have the protection of what comes out of my mouth because I'm not going to treat them any differently than I treat my own children, and I'm very, very serious about them, and I love them. And that had that love for them has everything to do with them and not what the world thinks I should do or what their parents do. No. Or the judgment I might face. We, 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 I'll give you a story. We were at um, our local masjid and our littles, I call them the littles, they ain't so little no more. I used to call them the littles, and they were relatively young then. And I saw a sister asking my bonus son a question that wasn't something that he needed to be even answer. And I said, how can I help you, honey? Because what you're going to do is not ask him anything, like where's your mother, where's your father, where's those things, because those things are not your business, and you don't need to ask them that because you see me here. You see me here. So I just gave her the information. Oh, honey, if you have any questions, please ask me. Don't ask, don't ask him. Oh no, I did. okay. I just I want to make sure we know the boundaries that are set forth and the protection and the circle of love and protection that is around these kids. And that includes me. That includes me. I may not be their parents through biology, but I am indeed parenting and co-parenting and helping with them because it matters. Them being born is outside of my control. Them having parents and having a mother that is married to the same man that I'm married to means that I'm going to protect them. They are the siblings 
of my biological children and they matter. All the children in this family matter. I don't care if it's my 28 year old daughter who's married and has two children. She's my daughter. And those are my grandsons. And I have a granddaughter. And that her, her mother is my daughter. Those children are under my protection. They're under the protection of my co-wife and our husband. So see, we can't control the relationship dynamics of polygyny and what our husbands do. And why do we want it? That's, that is an important question. Why do we want it? I don't want that kind of control. I want to learn my lessons that align set forth for me. And if it comes through my husband, if it comes from my children, if it comes from my co-wife, if it comes from my bonus children, my parents, whoever, those, my response is what I can control. Again, they don't say first reactors come to an accident. They come, they say first responders. Why? Because you can't be reactive and think you're going to have success in this. That doesn't mean our feelings don't matter. That doesn't mean that we're ill of critical thinking. We all, we can't, we have no ability to critically think or ask questions. But we are in control or should be in control of how we respond to that which is not in our control. So it's not my job to go in the community and slander my co-wife, my husband, you know, bonus babies, all that stuff like that. We're grown people. If we need to have a conversation, then we need to speak that from our mouths and talk to the people that we need to have the conversation with. The, the, the horse's mouth where we can get the answers instead of going to a bunch of people that don't care if we succeed or not. Because half the people that have asked me questions to my face, I'm looking for sincerity. I'm trying to see if what you're asking me is your business. Because I've had to tell people, well, that's not your business. I don't have to curse anybody out to raise my voice. I might tell somebody to back up. Like I had to do a sister at the masjid. I think you need to back up. Because see, now I feel like you're pressing me and you don't want to press me. Because what you're talking about, what you're asking me, ain't your business. It's out of both of our control. And it ain't your business. Period. So I said, I think you should back away from me now. It didn't mean I was going to hit anybody. That just means you need to back up. I'm done with the conversation. I was sitting now. You standing up. Right? Because I'm not going to snake you, but I'll definitely offer you a warning, and I think you better listen to me. That's it. That's it. I never started. I never started. But I will tell you, this is the boundary I have. This is not your business. You can come with a smile and it's still not your business, sweetie. Still not your business. So we are in control of that which we are in control of, and that is ourselves, because we have access to our body all the time. Because if we had access to the the, the intentions and the desires of others, then that means we could control them. So if we have control, why don't we stop them? Because we don't have it. We don't have it. It's about making this easier on ourselves and not more difficult and traumatizing. So having these conversations, we might not want to even hear the answers. We might not be ready for the answers, but we had better get ready. And one way of doing that is allowing the other person to speak their experience. You notice I didn't say their truth. Because a lot of people's truths are that they are girls and they're actually boys and they are women and they're actually men. I don't have to, I don't have to sign up for that class and I won't. But we got to have the conversations about what's going on with our husbands. They got to be able to have the conversation about what's going on with us. What are we feeling 
without accusing each other of things. That matters. Because words hurt and you can't take them back. Once you say something really, really vicious to one another, you might hug each other, have sex, kiss, all types of stuff, raise your children, but you don't want to fester and let contempt grow between you or resentment between you and your spouse because those are the steps that are leading to divorce. But I'm getting it into that in another video. But just know, pray for yourself, pray for others. Relinquish control if you feel like you have any and have those hard conversations because there's more happy times to be had. There's good, more good core mem memories to create. There's healing that's just waiting on us to get out of the way of our own ego. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Coach Fatima, I want to make sure that you guys are clicking, liking, subscribing, hitting that notification bell so that you're notified every time we upload a video on our channel. Now, if you made it this far in the video, make sure that you do go pick up the Let's Talk Polygyny Uncensored book by Coach Navir. So go transfer and coach Nyla to get three different perspectives and make sure you visit us by going to let's talk polygamy.com for details so we can order your book. Yay. Ooh, I'm so excited. It's, it's, it's awesome to say that I was a part of it and I really thank the LPR team for putting in so much effort. I love it. I love it so much. Thank you guys for supporting us in our channel and our family. Because we are a family first and foremost. So <laughs> I'll see you guys in the next one. I'm going to leave you with a little GLC. Make sure you're growing intentionally, loving, fearlessly, and connecting on a higher level every single day. Coach Fatima, see you in the next one. So yeah. Peace.